Good morning, YouTube. It's Lewis with Rose Fed's Travels. Today, Katie is going to show you one of our more recent purchases, and she, uh, it has some assembly that's required. And she's going to explain a little bit about why we bought it, and she'll show you how to assemble it. Good morning, YouTube. I'm Katie with Rosebud's Travels, and what we have bought is a Berkey travel size water filter set. And so I'm going to unbox it. I've already taken things out of the box, obviously, but I'm going to show you how it comes in the box. Um, we have this lid that goes on the top, and it's got a sweet little bonnet to protect it from scratching. Well, even when it travels, you use that. And then the next part, let me flip the box upside down. Let's see. The um, main part of the, the Berkey is in two sections. And they have the sections very carefully uh, wrapped. And um, they interlock, so I'm going to struggle a bit here getting them dis getting them separated. But this is the way they came packed too, so it's not really that bad. I'm going to flip it upside down and do a little shaking to loosen it up. There we go. Going to have to give some thought to this when we travel. You might want to pause it for a minute while I struggle. <laughs> so, what I have here is, this is the bottom section that the water filters into. And I've already washed it. Uh, you, do have, you are instructed to wash it ahead of time. This is the tank that the water pours into. And it sits into the top of that tank. And the lid, once it's assembled, actually goes onto the top. And then these are the filters. It comes with two filters. And if you look in the bottom of the top tank you can see two holes that's for the filters to sit into and then these are the filters the filters um, are a special material that is supposed to filter out all kinds of contaminants from chlorine to um, uh, just all kinds of toxins let's see uh, and that's why we're getting this. It's to make sure that when we are boondocking, we um, can always have good, clean water for drinking. It, has, it says here, the micropores within the black Berkey purification elements are extremely small. In fact, they're small enough to filter food co coloring from water. So one of the things that they have you do after you've assembled it is to put food coloring into one of the first tanks of water to make sure that the filters are working properly. If you don't, if your water is clear after it's filtered, then the uh, filters are working properly. And they provide food coloring for testing. Um, it says uh, that it will filter Viruses, pathogenic bacteria, and other worn, waterborne contaminants. So, I hope it will it will live up to that billing. But that's why we're getting this Berkey because we want to make sure that we always have clean water. The Berkey comes with a water tap that gets installed onto the bottom part of the filter. This little ring comes off too. Um, it protects the bottom of the filter from being damaged. It comes with a plastic uh, 
water spigot uh, that has to be assembled uh, because I want to make sure that our spigot doesn't get broken or damaged in travel I decided to to buy a uh, metal one uh, to use in place of the plastic spigot so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to assemble well actually the first thing I'm going to do is assemble the lid that part's easy if you have a screwdriver so I'm going to attach the lid, the knob to the lid. It has a little tiny screw with a washer. I'm going to put it through the hole on the lid. And then what it says to do is hand tighten the knob. So there we go. One knob hand tightened on a lid. And the lid should fit just like that. It, it fits loosely, actually, on the... Uh, uh, top tank. Okay, the next thing that I'm supposed to do is I am supposed to assemble the uh, tank here, the spigot onto the tank. It's got a number of components. It has uh, metal washers. Uh, it has the spigot itself has a uh, nut that goes onto things and then it has some silicone rings to help keep water from backwashing. Now the directions, I mean from leaking out, the directions say to put the washer facing backwards, which seems odd to me, but I guess I'm going to follow the directions. If I decide it doesn't work right, I'm going to do it differently later, but let's see. So the silicone fits very snugly over this, uh, this uh, tube that's protruding here, the threaded tube. And then this is supposed to go like that. And then on the inside of the tank is another one of the washers. A silicone washer. Boy, bit of a job here. There we go. And then another metal washer that goes over it. And then last is the the nut. Make sure I'm reading that correctly. Wait, this is the one. It says, remove the sticker from the two thin metal washers. I did that. Place one thin metal washer over the threads of the spigot. Position the washer so the beveled side faces away from the stainless steel chamber. That's what I did. Place one silicone washer over the spigot threads. I did that. Insert the threaded stem of the spigot through the hole in the side of the lower cham chamber. That's what I did. Place the remaining silicone washer, then the remaining metal washer, onto the threaded spigot. Again, position the beveled side of the metal washer away from the stainless steel chamber. Does that look like that's what that's describing? I believe so. Okay. Secure the spigot in place with the metal hex nut. Tighten securely by hand only. It says hold the nut in place and turn the spigot until tight. A lot of rotations. Then, doing that. Rotate the spigot until the handle faces upwards. Man, that doesn't... Hmm. After a bit of discussion with our son, Michael the engineer, we decided that the directions were a little confusing. 
I'm now placing the little beveled washer so that the, the slanted part goes toward the tank and then when I put the cone washer that's silicone over it, it should fit nicely and snugly into the hole. And it also looks to me like it's a much cleaner fit, so I'm pretty sure that's correct. Okay, now I'm going to insert again the spigot through the hole, and then I'm going to put the second cone washer over the threaded part. This is a little tricky, this part of the assembly. It's all supposed to tighten by hand though, so you can disassemble it easily for cleaning. And that makes good sense to me. Okay, now the second washer, I'm gonna place it directly over the cone washer so that it matches the bevel. And I'm gonna start the nut. I'll hold it up in a second. Lewis, do you want to zoom in on it, if it's maybe possible to see it? Let's see. Do you want to zoom in? Um. Okay. All right, so I'm going to tighten this nut. They suggest turning the spigot That'll work, but also I think tightening the nut kind of speeds things up until it gets snug. And you want to get it pretty snugly in the hole because, of course, you don't want water leaking out. Let's see. Holding the nut, turning the spigot around, getting it pretty good and snug. All right, Lewis, do you want to verify that this is pretty good and snug there? He might be able to get a little snugger than I can. It does say to just hand tighten. That would likely work. Okay. All right, so I've got my metal spigot. Um, so when I was washing these, I tested the flow this is the open position, I mean the closed position. Forward is the open position. So the little valve inside. All right. So then I just set it on the little base here. Seems like it's in good condition there. Okay. Now. I have to assemble, the next thing is to assemble the uh, elements. But first, before you assemble the elements, which sit into, I'm going to show you what they do. The upper tank, the elements into the upper tank like this and there's two of them and they secure through these holes in the bottom but the first thing you have to do is prime these elements so that's a whole nother step I have this little gizmo that fits over the sink faucet and then it fits into this thing and what it does is you turn on the water the water pressure from the faucet forces water into the filter and what your goal is to make water bead on the outside of the filter because you want there to be no air in the filter when you're using it so you want it to be full of water at least that's what I understand Okay, okay, Katie's going to do that step, and we'll come back.
All right. B. Okay. I have the elements primed, that is, stuffed full of water and ready for filtering. And what the assembly process is, is there's a, what is it, they call it a specific kind of washer. It says a sealing washer, and you place it over the threaded portion of the element, like that. So I put the sealing washer on, and then I'm going to tilt my upper tank sideways. I'm going to feed the filter with the washer on it, the end of the threaded end. And then I take this little uh, wing nut and I screw it onto the end of the threaded portion here. There we go, got it started. And I make it hand tight. Everything is hand tight so that you can undo it easily and disassemble it. Good enough? Yep. Okay, now I'm going to hang this upside down so that the uh, filter as it's sitting there doesn't distort by being pushed on edge. It does say don't store this with the filter sideways in the tank. You always want the tank to be vertical one direction or another. Okay, so now I'm going to put my other piece on here. Whoops, I need to put the, the washer, which is a really fat, rubbery washer. I don't think a momentary positioning in the sideways is going to hurt, but you just don't want it like that all the time. Okay, and now put this wing nut on. It's a little, seems to be a little tricky. It's a little uh, rough starting the wing nut. sit it sideways for this part because I simply am not coordinated enough to do it any other way. But I'll do it quickly. All right. Almost there. Okay, the threaded part has a small hole and I believe that is where the water filters through. Okay, so now this is what I have. I have the two little Berkey elements there inside of the two. Let me say this is a pretty wet experience um, because the um, filters are wet, so probably be better to do this over by the sink. Okay, now there's a part that's included, a very small part. It is a little teeny tiny J hook. I don't know if you can see it. The purpose of this little teeny tiny J hook is to keep the uh, a suction from forming between the two sections, the two tanks. So you put you have the rubber base on this says, and this is an anti-air lock clip over the, and you snap it over the upper lip of the lower chamber with the lip side out. Just like that. So the purpose of that little J clip is to uh, prevent um, suction from forming. Okay, and now is going to be the moment of truth. I'm going to set the top section onto the lower section. And um, 
This is the way the lid sits on it. And I'm gonna go find a pitcher and put water in into the top section and see what happens. Okay, I've got a pitcher of cold water with the red dye added and I'm gonna pour it into the tank of the Berkey to see if it filters out. My sink area is a bit of a mess today, so I'm not gonna show you my sink, but I am showing you the water with the red dye, and we'll see what happens. So Katie wanted to show you the inside. It has a red dye inside, and it is filtering. She poured it full of water, and then she's going to show you that the water Let's see if it'll drain out now. Coming out the other side. Well, here it goes. There, now it's draining. The filter is kind of slow. It's not real fast Yeah. at first. I think after it's been used a few times, it's probably faster. But as you can see, it has red dye in the tank, and that's the water coming out is filtered. Here, and it, it is not it's clear it's clear doesn't have red dye so that's how you test it to make sure the filters are working correctly and looks like it's working correctly to me yeah. it just does take a while to filter through it, it holds a gallon and a half so yep. you'd only need to fill it maybe once a day or so maybe twice I guess if you were drinking a lot right at any rate Pretty cool. That's how it works.